Hi there, folks. Hi there, Dan. Hi, yeah. You all right? Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much, as always, here for my lesson. Indeed. Did you enjoy your well-earned East breakage? Fantastic. Bit of sunshine, and we came back just as the sun started shining here as well. Beautiful. Very nice, too. Yes, it was pretty good here. Yeah, it's been lovely over the weekend. It's been delightful. So yeah. what's on your guitar playing mind, dare well, I ask? Well, um, we tried to record a podcast a couple of weeks ago and oh, had yes. some technical difficulties, so that has become the podcast that never will be. It will, yeah, it'd be like the lost podcast if this ever gets famous. <laughs> I heard they only rec- they recorded 61, but there's only 60 out there. <laughs> yes, yeah, so 61A. Podcast. Um, like so Eric Johnson, not Eric Johnson, what's his name? Robert Johnson's lost song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. called 29 and they're supposed to be 30. And... Signing signing his soul to the devil. That's right. Crossroads. Um, anyway. It wasn't quite as much as that. Um, so the podcast was about rhythm and uh, it, it really exposes, whenever I kind of really look at rhythm um, and trying to nail the poles and everything like that, it's always one of those areas that I think I've always sort of put to the back burner mm-hmm. a little bit. So um, since then, I've decided to just work solidly on it. Um, And I've been stripping it right back. I've been slowing it right down. I've been tapping my foot and trying to get the foot tapping along with the rhythm that I'm doing as part of the actual process of playing. Yeah. And it's slowly improving. And I, I just wanted to start our podcast today by recommending to everyone out there just spend a load of time. I'm really hot on ear training, but just spend a load of time on uh, on your rhythm playing early on as well. Mm. And um, so I, I was hoping we could do something along those lines today. Maybe talk yeah. about. I've got some things to show you that I've been working on. Okay. And maybe we can do a podcast using that later. But um, perhaps I mean, like the rhythm playing, actual rhythm and chords, and this kind of thing is something that I just need to really just keep working on mm. on my own. I think as well. Um, a little bit at home but perhaps we could look at phrasing over solos and doing some soloing over backing tracks and looking at the rhythm of soloing as part of this whole the rhythmic journey rhythmic journey yeah yeah i would like to say a few words about rhythm as well because I, th- I think it is a little bit of sometimes the the unsung hero of guitar playing yes is good rhythm guitar playing as we were going to say in the, the podcast, it's the, the <laughs> fabled lost podcast. Um, you know, we spend inordinate amounts of time maybe studying lead parts and if, do we sweep pick this, do we alternate pick this, you know, do we play it legato or, you know, sort of yeah. what tone's yeah. being used. And yet, if we're honest, unless you're completely a soloist and no, do nothing else, a lot of your time, if you're playing in a band or if you're recording or anything like that, really, you'll, you'll be playing rhythm a lot of the time. Mm. You, you think of a lot of session musicians. Session musicians are often used with, with pop acts because they're the acts with record company backing that can afford to get in a session musician. You know, count the amount of like full-on guitar solos You know, in, in a couple of albums worth of pop music. Yeah, they will be there. There will be interesting guitar bits, but your glory boy moments will be few. You know, you'll probably find yourself knocking out country rhythms, funky rhythms, some power chord vamping, and you know all that sort of thing more of the time. Yeah, that's you know, and and people are being paid quite well to do so. Um, For quite a long time, I played in a, a wedding band, and and you know while there were plenty of solos the rhythm playing was all important because I was the only guitar player. It was a three piece. Mm. And so it all rests on me. It's not as though I can do all the twiddly bits, as some people say. Sit back for the rest of the song. (laughs) That's that's right. So, Mm. you know, it's it's certainly worth sort of looking at um, the rhythm of chords or or rhythm of of, of sort of, you know, how how we go about maybe constructing a part and things like that. And also sort of, like you say, like the lead thing. Where yeah. do you want to start? You said the lead thing. Do you do, want to look at any yeah, cool do, stuff? Shall I just quickly show you um, what I've been doing All do. for the homework? I know uh, what you did last summer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I've, uh, I've, done a, I've done a little bit of work on, uh, on rhythmic um, notes and subdivisions. Right. Um, and I've produced some A4 um, sheets which have 
rhythmic structures and subdivisions of a, of the quarter note, mm-hmm. which is if you've got a bar and you've got four beats to a bar, it's how you divide each of those four beats. And um, looking, I, I decided I really, really look at it, and I realised that if you talk about triplets, quarter notes, um, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes, you haven't actually got that many different variations in some way to go to work upon Mm -hmm. and so there's a certain number of rhythmic structures that you find again and again yeah and so i've been producing these so you can see as like a down down up like 16th note structure i'll just give you a few examples and that's the other way around with the 16th notes at the beginning and the eighth, Mm -hmm. eighth note at the end one with the eighth note in the middle and one all 16th notes. And I've just really been trying to use this along with a few programs. There's a great app uh, on the iPad called 8 Strumming, and you can randomise the strumming patterns over mm-hmm. two bars. You shake it, and it just comes up with this strumming pattern, and then you can try and play it with a metronome, and it really exposes, mm. certainly exposes my weaknesses and so that's why I've just decided to just spend every practice session that I'm going to be doing over the next few months literally working on rhythm mm. and then hopefully getting some other uh, things from, from you as well on top. But that's what I'm really going to be working on. And so I, thinking about it, I don't think there's that much out there for guitar with those kind of strumming patterns and things. So maybe with a bit of forethought, it will be something that we could produce for people. Yeah, I mean... One sort of asks oneself, why isn't there? Hmm. I know. I think I know the answer. Go on. <laughs> I, th- I think for many guitar players, for what we want to do most of the time, we sort of gradually figure it out ourselves. When you play enough songs, you kind of start to figure it out yourself. Right, yeah. Sometimes, you know, you have to slow things right down. Because it is a combination of down and up strokes, long notes, short mm. notes, and also note groupings. You know, you're going to have, like you say, triplets, or you're going to have eighth notes, quarter notes. And gradually, <clears throat> we sort of seem to be able to kind of rock along yeah. with things. Because most things are quite simple, I suppose. Simple rhythms. Mm. Yeah. I mean, where, where I think people sometimes get unstuck, and I don't want to sound like an old... Fuddy duddy. Um, but the world has changed the world of guitar playing, not so much what people play, although a little bit of what people play, but how people learn has changed immensely yeah. in the sort of 36, 37 years that I've been playing. You know, when I was a boy, guitar playing was so good, you see. So hard, wasn't it? Like, well, yeah, it's good there was, ear training. There and, was no internet. Yeah. You know, if you wanted to know the tabs for something, you went down the music shop and you hoped that they didn't have a rock score, but they had a tab. Yeah. And sometimes you were stuck with the rock score. And sometimes in the rock score, you had a guitar tab. So you had to buy the music for every other instrument, maybe to learn your song. You mm. couldn't just go on Google and go, I want to learn. Exactly. Whatever. You couldn't do it. Um, what I think it sometimes maybe did mean is that where we went and bought albums, we went and bought singles, mm. and we tended to listen to them as a whole, I think maybe that was also reflected for some of us in the way we played them. So maybe yeah. we played songs as a whole, and we played in a band, because we didn't have backing tracks, really, unless we went and bought a CD. And that's after CDs came in. Yeah, I mean, there was some stuff on tape, but it wasn't going to be great. Yeah. So... <laughs> Oh, I'm back in the oh no, I've missed it again. <laughs> so instead of getting your experience, for want of yeah. a better word, you know, sitting in a bedroom playing along with headphones to a backing track through a Line Six pod, you've got your experience by finding a band that wanted you, mm. going and learning how to get the sounds out of your guitar with completely the wrong gear half the time, listening to the track, picking it up off friends continuing to listen, continuing to get bite-sized chunks of information that you put together to make up the whole. Yeah. Now, do I want to go back to that situation where some of the learning is a little more inaccessible? Not really. Mm. But 
I think sometimes we've grown an entire generation of guitar players who maybe pick and choose a little bit because you can't do that in a band. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, who who goes to a pub on a Friday night? And oh, we've got a, we've got a gig at the Dog and Duck. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna get so busy on a Friday. We're gonna though. play seventy five <laughs> songs. Why are you playing seventy five songs? Because I've got my favourite bits from all of the tune. Right? <laughs> yeah. I don't want all that other rhythm rubbish. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put a backing track on and just <laughs> play my favourite bits. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, That's right. So Fair actually, point. learning rhythm and learning how to play an entire song, how to hold an entire song together, is very useful. You know, when I was playing in the wedding band, we would do songs which were you know, clean, clean guitar sound, and in some cases you do have to pretty much strum your way through them. Mm. And so you had to come up with a rhythm part that conveyed, conveyed the song, even if it was a song that was supported by an entire orchestra on the record. Yeah. Somehow, with a bit of harmony vocals and a bit of intuition, we've got to make this sound convincing. Yeah. You know, I've really enjoyed working in. I've worked in a band at the moment with mm. uh, another student of yours. Uh, shout out to Tim out there if he's watching. Tim, Tim, uh, Tim. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's really interesting, isn't it? Like, there's a song that we were working out where uh, one of the bits was a kind of arpeggiated high chord mm-hmm. uh, on an on a keyboard, and I've tried to get a, the sound on the guitar. Mm. And you start thinking, well, you can't let the notes ring into each other because it's very staccato on there, and it's uh, you're trying to get the same kind yeah, of sound using the chorus pedal. It does, yeah, it's really yeah. good fun trying to work that out. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, most of us, if we're honest, unless we really, really wanted to do it, we wouldn't sit in our bedroom going. Yeah, you're not going to yeah. do that, are you? No, no. You're probably going to find something a little bit more interesting to play. Um, and that's what I mean. You know, you learn to do that stuff often when you're forced to play it in a band or yeah. when you learn sort of songs on an acoustic guitar and you want to try and carry the whole tune. But it's interesting, like playing these different, like kind of, oh, such a weakness of mine, I'm almost reluctant to do this. To the world, oh, show <laughs> to, me. to the three listeners Your out in America. Out game, Gary. Uh, something like, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, you're in quiet there, mate. Yeah, here we go. I'll get my foot on that. I'm trying to keep the hand going and all that kind of thing. But when I first started doing that, it was just all over the shop. And stick a metronome on it, Mm -hmm. all over the shop. So in a way, when you get to a level where you realise it's a weakness, it's a bit methodical. But it's quite interesting because you want to get it. You want to get that. You want, and, and that feels different. That that rhythmic structure feels different to. Sorry. And they all feel different in their own way. So if you can sort of mm-hmm. meditate on them a little bit, they become part of your arsenal. Yeah. Oh, I'll finish the word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you get what I mean? So, I do. I mean, I would, I would give a little bit of advice because I know we, we've got other things we can yeah, look at. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, sometimes it's really good to count the in-between beats. Yeah. People, you know, if you said to people, like, what's harder to count, a fast song or a slow song? The majority of people, unless they thought you were trying to fool them, would probably say, oh, a fast song's got to be harder. Yeah. But actually, actually slow easy, songs yeah. have bigger gaps between the counts. Mm. And that's tougher. Yeah. Because you were kind of like in guesswork land unless you've got that pulse going. So actually, rather than going dun 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 dun, because also gives you a slightly lumbered kind of counting feel. Yeah. You go one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. Get the feel going. So rather than that kind of sound. Yeah. Accenting on the one, you yeah. don't have to accent on the one, but it seems to work. Yeah, definitely does. Yeah, one. It's like you were one saying two, on the the one podcast one that never will be fabled uh, podcast we lost about thinking forever. like a drummer. Yeah, and that kind of. 
wanna to, I 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 wanna to. So playing the high notes. See, it seems smoother then, even me counting for you. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's just getting into the groove. <laughs> it's like part of getting into the groove though, often if we count the in, in between the bits. <laughs> in the pocket. If we're counting the in between timing, we will be counting most likely some kind of offbeat. Yeah. And with these, unless you're dividing the bar pretty evenly by four, yeah. if it's a four beat bar, you're gonna end up with something on the offbeat. Yep. Yep, yep. So sometimes it's maybe those offbeats where where we're not quite locking in. Yeah. Whereas if we count them like one and two and 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 one and two. And when it gets syncopated and you're dropping the first note, it's really hard then, isn't it? Like Right, yeah. you are doing the right thing though. I'm, I know I'm playing quietly, sorry. Doing Just do, to save the world from... Uh... I'll play it at a proper volume. <laughs> so, please, please. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Doing the faux strum, like yeah, you were yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. where you strum, but you don't hit the strings, is good because your hand is almost acting like a metronome in itself. Yeah. You know, da da and da 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 and da 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 and da 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 and we're just missing that note. Yeah. Da, da, I had an incident da. a few months ago where I had to dep. Now, if you've ever got into the murky world of depping, well, not no, no. <laughs> it's it's a cruel mistress because even if you know the tune, it can catch you out. You might find they do it in a different key. Yeah. Oh, didn't know that. I should have asked. Yeah. Or you might find that the song is done slightly differently. Or they go, oh, there's this intro bit that's different. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Guess there's no YouTube version with that on then. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you, can, you know, so it's, it's easy when you're trying to get a set together and get it together quickly to miss something. Yeah. Now, I missed a schoolboy error. A schoolboy, I didn't miss a schoolboy error. I made a, sorry, I made a schoolboy error. <laughs> we were doing, uh, we were in a bar, we were playing Human. Oh, yeah. By... You were there, actually. I, I was just about to say, yeah. I think I might have been yeah. there. You were, were playing Human by the Super, Killers. Supersaurus. That's it. Yeah. And the, the the lick, the guitar lick, goes like this. Yeah, that's, that's quite rhythmic. That's pretty much the, the lick. The thing is, what's difficult to pick up on the, on the record, and actually it's not until you really listen closely. I got the lick, I thought I'd listen closely. I thought I was there. Was half a beat out, right? Yeah, yeah. It's fine, Hund. <laughs> yeah. So, like the drummer says to me, it's like you're going and 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 Shifts. It's a tiny little thing. Yeah. But it makes a difference. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, just just that just that little thing. And it's a bit like your faux strum. Yeah. Having that kind of muted thing there or or, or that kind of So it's just there but barely audible. Yeah, yeah. And then kicking off with the rest of the riff. Just then it puts it your hand is playing rhythm the way you want it to in the right places and the notes are now displaced yeah. but it's right well you're giving me quite a lot of um kind of encouragement i guess that i'm pursuing a worthy a worthy uh, area of my playing basically as well so absolutely i mean don't be afraid to experiment either you know combination of what what can fox a person is the combination of downs and ups yeah, in terms of the the down and up strokes in rhythm playing can be confusing. Yeah, because it's not as simple as, as like oh well if I play reggae it's all up strokes and if no. I play blues I play all down strokes because sometimes it, things have a better accent. Yeah, using an up stroke or a like better reggae. accent. Yeah, using yeah using a down stroke or they're easier a certain way. 
with the um, Irish uh, music we played, we played some jigs and stuff like that. We mm-hmm. won't go into that this time. We did in the podcast that will never be. <laughs> but uh, the podcast can you find it? It's like an Easter egg hidden for you. To we might, on. we might, yeah, we might do that. Uh, but they do this kind of like um, triplet rhythm, so it's like. So they do. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down. So obviously between the two triplets, you're having to get back quicker. So you have it so so that's quite a So you got the did the da did the da Down up down, down up down. So what I do there, yeah, and again it's um, this is where it's such a difficult blooming subject. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to smell rag. I know. <laughs> but the reason being that it it's, is. it's one of those things, if it didn't feel and sound natural, no one would want to employ you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they think you sounded as, you know, as Jack Black said on the School of Rock, a little bit robotronic. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, it, yeah. They, it's got to it's feel and sound feel. natural. So you have to work towards those ends. But some of the things that make rhythm playing sound natural are things we found out over time, mm. and we don't even subconsciously we don't even consciously kind of clock it. Subconsciously, we're doing it, but we don't consciously sit there and go, "I'm going to do this." Mm. Um, it's a bit like that stuff that I always say to people if you're into picking, watch the Troy Grady stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. And he breaks down picking and stuff, and he, you know, these guys who he's who he's videoing. And intensely looking at how they pick stuff and how they sort of manage to skip past strings and not get caught up in them, they don't kind of sit down and think of a strategy. No, but they've worked a strategy out over time. Their their hands, their head, their brain has figured it out. Yeah, and come up with a solution without necessarily sitting down. You know, the yeah, often you don't know you're doing it. Mathematically <laughs> working it out. Yeah, exactly. So I'm realizing there. I'm doing a faux strum at the end. Bring right. me back. Yeah, Bring yeah, back. absolutely. And it has to be double speed. Yeah, nice. sit down and think that's what I'll do it's good to see it though isn't it it's good to like be able to break it down and analyse it I think sometimes slowing things down is good you know I have had my times of having to sit there and slow stuff down stuff down yeah you know nobody sort of wakes up being able to play the guitar perfectly you know it's it's a case of continuous you know continuously sort of evolving into a better player and continuously yeah. working on things, and hopefully all that working on things eventually comes out as something that sounds good and sounds natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what we hope. But also some of this stuff, I think, has possibly been honed over a long time. I mean, when I was when I was seventeen, I was playing in five bands. That's a lot of bands, y'all. <laughs> that's some commitment. It is some commitment. <laughs> yeah. I was playing in some originals bands, so I was writing songs all the time. Yeah, I was playing in bands where band. I had to yeah. sing. Yeah, I was in the the um, the Brighton Youth Jazz Orchestra, playing a load of or trying to bimble my way through playing a load of of um, American jazz with musicians who were far better readers than I was. Yeah, and then I played in a big band at school doing a mixture of jazz and pop and rock and funk and all sorts of things. And although it was a baptism of fire in some respects, yeah, it also because you knew you were the engine of the band, certainly yeah. in the big band, you using clean sounds an awful lot. And there's a lot of rhythm playing, an awful lot of rhythm playing. Solos are few and far between. It's not like a rock band where it's every song virtually, and so you have to bring the rhythm. Yeah, and after a while, there's a degree of naturalness that kind of has to come in there. You know, otherwise, it, you know, it'd feel horrible. It'd sound horrible. Yeah. You know, and I think no that just that. probably came over time, maybe. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no, that's cool. 
with yeah. a little bit of working on the side. But the more of it you do, the better the better things will become. Sometimes an acoustic guitar, although some people see it as the guitar you start on before you buy an electric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. If my son or daughter better for starting on an electric or an acoustic. <laughs> Whatever you have will be yeah, fine. Exactly, yeah. But sometimes having a song where you are just, you know, being able to strum your way through it is no bad thing. You know, try and keep strumming going for, sort of, you know, on and on and on endlessly. And yeah. as I say, there is a stamina which needs to be adhered to. When I was doing the whole wedding bandy stuff, yeah, we used to do the Wheaters version of Respect. Oh, yes. And the guy was pretty, you know, full on about having this in play in a very timely manner, you know, quite quick and quite sort of precise. And so, you know, you're stuck there for five long minutes, yeah. You know, I think it was a bit quicker than that, even. Yeah, that's you went uh, galloping along, and you know, it went like that for the whole tune. Yeah, and you know, you dropping the ball isn't really an option, but keeping that going again, that's that's something which you you know you can sort of work work towards keeping cool. the rhythm nice and steady for long periods of time. I should work on that. Can we have a look at some? We better have phrasing. Yeah. <laughs> so, if if you would be so kind as to maybe. Find some, find some filth for me and you. Okay. Oh, dear. Uh, there we go. My coffee's nearly cold, folks, so I'm going to drink my coffee. Oh, uh, don't blame you. Oh, there we go. There's the filth. Cool. So, and we've got a backing track, haven't we, Dan? We've got a backing track, it's in B minor, you can use blues, you can use minor pentatonic, you can use a normal yeah. natural minor, and you're looking at phrasing, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, so maybe taking some rhythmic structures and trying to get them in or something like that, I don't know, or, okay. or whatever, whatever you think. Should we have a little blow to start with yeah. just for a couple of minutes? Definitely. And Exercise of day. <laughs> it's, it's a nice metal guitar in the background there. It's chromio, like Chro chromio. Thank you. 
Just uh, in case uh, you want to play along with what we've just been playing along with, it's called the Fancy Fusion backing track in B minor. Hashtag SZBT. It's not that fancy. Two over five. No, it's not, it's not, it's that, not fancy. Really that fancy. The guitar is though. Although. Um, Do you know what is fancy? God. Mr. Kipling's. Oh, fancy. Definitely. Yeah. No, they are fancy. Oh, my, tum- my fancy. tummy is rumbling. <laughs> <laughs> I t- <laughs> something else is fancy. What? Fender- Fender's new Game of Thrones guitars. Oh, I've seen those. <laughs> yes, you really do have to be a fanboy for one of them. You buddy. really do. Yeah, you have to you... be quite. A, you have to have quite a healthy wallet. How much are they? Thirty-five k. No. Yeah, thirty-five thousand. No, Fender. No. <laughs> yeah, and you've got to have a collection, haven't you, as well? Really. I imagine. If you get one, you've got to have all of them, haven't you, surely? Oh, come on. Fender. So yes. they're bringing out the Jimmy Page Telecasters, the custom shop versions. They're £43,000 for a pair of guitars. Oh. <laughs> not going to buy the baby a new hat. No, it? it's really? really not. No, no. Really, no. Fender, really? They're aiming their market there somewhere, aren't they? You know, honest? five, six grand for a, for a master built is salty enough. You know, <laughs> yes. 43 k yes. 43 Go away. Yeah, a little bit ill. <laughs> what you want is a nice squire and change some, change it to some Seymour <laughs> Duncan pick up here. Perfect. Get some iron gears in there, it's fine. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Right, yeah, that back enough of track. this frivolity and jollity. But, you know, Fender, what are you thinking? Yeah, 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 exactly. Really? It's it's quite sad, isn't it, really? In some well, ways. I mean, I suppose, you know... They're going to make their money. Everybody needs a hobby. Yeah. You know, if there's a market out there... People will, people will go for it. Mm. You know, I like nice guitars as much as the next guy, but some stuff is just like they're just kind unreasonably of unreasonably salty. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like they're going for quality. They're just going for the cliche, or they're going for the the thing they know is going to add ten grand on, and it's you know. I mean, I guess somebody in the future maybe will be able to kind of you know view them as collector's items and. Possibly, if you get a real mm. Game of Thrones fanboy, they might, you know, yeah. throw more money at it. I mean, they'll still be nice guitars. Oh, yeah. But they're just not nice guitars that you're going to want to go out and play. No, exactly. Yeah, they're going to want you know, to set everyone, in a box somewhere. Everyone moans about Relic guitars. I love that guitar. It's awesome. But do, do you know what I think about Relic mm. guitars? I don't take it to a gig and worry about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, to the uninitiated, to, to, to you and me, we look at it, oh, yeah, it's like... Yeah, we're thinking kind of old Fender, even though it's an exotic. You know, we're kind of mm. thinking the vibe of the old, yeah, old school Fenders, and that's there's a certain charm with that. Yeah, 
you know nice image yeah but, but most most people who are brazen enough to steal a guitar from the stage don't think like that yeah 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 they yeah. want the glitziest chintziest one this one might go around it's yeah. quite glitzy Keep an eye on this. yeah <laughs> funnily enough my PRS looks more dressed down than yours strangely yeah. enough doesn't it it's got a certain glimmer to it hasn't it I suppose I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll give you a barometer of your average audience no offence to audiences. <laughs> I played I played a gig once in Bromley and I, I had a No Les- offence to Bromley. No offence to Bromley. <laughs> and I had a Les Paul standard. It was one of the yeah. two thousand and fifteen ones with the super wide neck. I love the tone, love the build quality, didn't get on with the neck. Had it for a couple of months, thought, yeah, I really want a Les Paul. This isn't the one for me. So I sold it. But I overheard a couple of that <laughs> near near the stage, I'm like, well, you know. And I put it on the stand. It did look pretty cool on the stand because there's a bit of sparkle in it. It's sparkly sort of edges yeah. to the paintwork and stuff. And I goes, well, look, it's a real Gibson. It's not even an Epiphone. <laughs> and then it's like that, sort of, that told me all I needed to know. Yeah, yeah. The quality of your audience right there. Yeah. <laughs> they were impressed though, so it's quite nice. Well, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They're taking an interest. Granted, but it worried me. My guitar heart sank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we don't press this um, unfancy, fancy backing track. Yeah. So we were looking at different different phrases. So how did you feel you got on with, with phrases? Well, I was things? just sort of noodling along, basically, I feel. Noodling along. Okay. Playing the occasional notes and that sounded nice and missing bits and, you know, that kind of thing. There's a couple of ways we can sort of think of the, the rhythm of, of, yeah. of things. Because also it's what does this rhythm do to that rhythm? Yeah. You know, and again, it's back to partly back to this pulse thing, having that timing going on in your head. If you don't know what the timing is, how can you throw timing around? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, Displacements. You, yeah, you, yeah. You simply can't because you don't, if you don't know where the beat is, where well, you, you're stuffed. If you do happen to throw the beat around, you're lucky. Yeah. So... <clears throat> first thing is maybe how you group your notes. Yeah, okay. So in the basics, just like you're looking at out with your rhythm play, you group things in threes. Yeah. So I'm just going up B minor there. So <laughs> Yeah, and maybe finish like I did there with a different rhythm, possibly. <laughs> Just to kind of yeah. tail it off a little bit at the yeah, end okay. there, wrap it up. Yeah. Something like that. That's yeah. it. A lot of what I often see is quite good playing with licks amongst a lot of people. Yeah. But then the end of the licks don't always kind of wrap up nicely yeah we've spoken about that before we about have form yeah. uh, that's good yeah. you know it's a bit like talking to someone and and like the, the, the like sentence their sentence trails hand. off yeah 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 okay yeah um so you you want to kind of wrap it up in a nice little a little parcel yeah okay so that's quite nice that's quite a nice bit of advice straight away <laughs> You can, also, you can also do it in fours, of course. <laughs> okay, that's bad. It's better. So I've done it a little bit differently at the end, but. Like that. Yeah. Now, if you took that to the pentatonic, you could go the pentatonic in three. Yeah. Uh, or fours. Now, even, that for a while. 
<laughs> now, even, even though we're using kind of fairly staid sort of scales there, you know, you can follow it through the notes. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, have to be the notes in a set order in a scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do, but, you know, you can have, you know... <laughs> So we've got da do 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 da do 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 that kind of Yes. So we go. Rhythm is more important than the nose. Dad, do 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 dad. That's a bit sweet. Yeah. Dad, do 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 do. That kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And following it through, varying the length of your phrases. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, you might sort of start with a, a short phrase. something small and then just push it out from there now you might have an instance yeah. for example where you start with a small phrase but you add a note one higher at time <laughs> Yeah, I see what you're doing there. So you sort of start with a similar thing and then sort of widen the scope from there. When you're using backing tracks, it's very good to do this on a backing track because it's not the kind of thing you necessarily want to be doing on a gig unless you're constant. Yeah. Sort of, uh, or when Confident, what the word I'm looking for. Confident, confident yeah, yeah, and you're, yeah. you know, you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would concur that you know, practicing is practice. Yeah, the gig yeah. is the gig is the gig. Even if it means you have to maybe shelf some of the things you really wanted to play, yeah, but no. because you couldn't quite nail them, you know, sort of playing it, playing it safe. Yeah, and sometimes it depends on the mood you're in. Maybe you've been playing loads that week. You've got tons of ideas. You've been playing lots, and you're really, really pretty well lubricated from a guitar playing point of view, and you can go in with something new, or maybe you come up with a new idea, and you think, well, I know I can do it, mm. and I know it's going to be cool, so I'm going to do it. Yeah, okay. But, you know, you might find you've had a heavy week, you've hardly picked up a guitar, and you'd be better off reverting to type than trying to reinvent the wheel that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Keep musicians and singers <laughs> and performers... We have good days and we have bad days. Yeah. You know, we have days where we're full of creativity and we have days where we're about as creative as a matchbox. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. just <laughs> being human. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. the difference is that most decent performers can kind of turn in a, a good performance for which, you know, we'll, see, we'll still sort of stand and we'll still be appreciated by people. Yeah. You know, whereas somebody who's maybe like struggling in that area... Like, yeah, you know, their good day is, is someone else playing, you know, when they're ticking over. Yeah. If you, if you know what I mean. I do, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, let's try again. So, yeah. we want different lengths of phrases. Yeah. Different note groupings. Don't feel you have to slavishly adhere to going down to the same place in the scale, like you're following it through like a coil. Yeah. You know, you can follow the idea through, 
and apply the rhythm to notes. There's a really great little Paul Gilbert video somewhere. It's probably buried along with our like lost. Mm, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. <laughs> It's in one of those you hid it on YouTube somewhere, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I'm hiding, it, <laughs> hiding these things everywhere. I'm going to release them as Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was a really great Paul Gilbert one where he he this was years ago where he talked about following the rhythm through mm. in a lick and not necessarily slavishly adhering to going down the same old scale. You know, you could put mm. in a bit of the blues scale. You could put in some chromatic passing notes. Yep. So let's roll with that. Yeah, okay. And let's see where this where this takes I'll us. I'll do Try and keep those ideas in mind. Do I start or do you want to start? Yeah, you can start. <laughs> Everyone always says that. <laughs>
Yeah, definitely pushing the boundaries. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You sort of get a bit more relaxed into it, don't you? A little bit more confident. Mm. Start thinking about other things you can do. Start getting a bit more creative. Yeah, it's good. It, it's a funny thing, sort of improvisation. Um, as I was saying to Tim last night, there's a... I'll, I'll probably use this famous quote, goodness knows how many times. Yeah. Carl Verheyen. Carl Verheyen, oh, he's the, yeah. Amazing player. He used to play yeah. for Supertramp. Yeah. And he said even the best improvisers are probably only improvising, like truly playing stuff they've never played before. Yeah. Maybe 30% of the time on a good night. Yeah. But he said when you work stuff out, when you come up with stuff, it's like money in the bank. Yeah. Now, let me explain. I'm not going to necessarily break down the licks but I'm going to sort of show you the my thinking pattern maybe yeah, on, uh, yeah. on this on some of this so I'm looking to make it swing and groove yeah I wasn't you know? doing any of that actually the swing pattern I was avoiding I was keeping it quite rigid I enjoyed putting some triplets in at mm-hmm. one point that was good fun you can swing on a few notes so you don't necessarily need loads <laughs> like that which kind of swing I'm thinking of the swing but I'm also thinking of kind of what would a horn player do well you get a little horn section mm. and sometimes you get that you know they've got their Ba-da, definite Ba-da, rhythms Ba-da, and it's kind of Ba-da, staccato Ba-da. Yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. So thinking outside the box, just thinking get that rhythm like the... You know, you, you think of those sort of super yeah. cool horn parts, you know. So kind of swinging with a bit of sliding and stuff. Uh, yeah, just making it kind of groove. Certain ways that your fingers fall make it easier, don't they? Okay. There's certain notes I tend to use, which I know for me are the sweet notes. The ninth. <laughs> yeah. Using the minor. Th- well, it wouldn't be the minor third, so we're using the seventh, the dominant seventh, and then finishing on the fifth. So essentially, you're playing like an F sharp minor pen. The sorry, fifth F sharp minor arpeggio. B minor. Yeah. yeah. F sharp minor uh, yeah. arpeggio over a B minor. So you're highlighting the notes in the minor, more or less, and then landing on the fifth. The fifth is a nice note. Yes, 
bend fifth, from the, that's it. Yeah, sure. You can that's bend right. from the ninth <laughs> up to the minor third. Are you there? <laughs> Kind of resolves it kind of nicely. So there's that sort of kind of melodic thing yeah. going on. So that also means that they're quite nice notes to kind of maybe finish on. So say you've gone down to a B, rather than hang on B, because you know, it's the, a bit boring, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the risk of sounding slightly obtuse to the bit, darling. But yeah. if you go down the F sharp, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Or even go down to the F sharp. Tones, but I think it's in such a way that now I'm kind of fairly smoothly sort of playing what I want to play through those chord, you know, through the chord changes. And of course, they have a different effect over every chord in the in the progression. This being a relatively fast moving progression, we're going back Sorry. to the B minor quite regularly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we could outline something in every chord, but actually, I find the melody quite nicely flows without necessarily. Just the B minor, just yeah. B minor vamp type thing, yeah. Yeah, sometimes what I'll do is I'll do, you probably heard me do this, like a bending kind of lick where I'm bending as we go down. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's a bit harder. So starting. I started on the 17. And then down the 14. Yeah. Uh, so you get the idea with that. So yeah. that's a more guitar-y, but slightly quirky. Kind of to that F sharp yeah yeah with some of the licks I'm sort of ending by going down maybe to the note below so doing it quite quickly yep yeah because sometimes when people kind of land on whatever note <coughs> in a scale it just sounds a bit crap whereas if you kind of go down to one which has a bit more meaning to it a little bit more interesting. So there I was kind of coming back on myself a little bit. Yeah. Yes. So the high note going back down. Yeah. Yeah. You get that kind of phrase. That's cool. You can even put in a little amusement. thing if I want something really sort of flowing and guitar-y yeah as opposed to some of these bends. things bends are cool Sorry. we sort of got a bendy lick there which yeah. is good um, but if I want something which is maybe a little more regular say I might go for the sort of kind of very Steve Lukather-esque thing with the sort of scoopy treble <laughs> Sorry, kind of lick. So 
first kind of from the B. <laughs> Back on yourself and climbing up with yeah. the tremolo. <laughs> To me, it's fairly second nature to play something like that. Yeah. But I think it's only come through probably years and years of yeah, playing yeah. over a backing track and it sounds crap, but you think it sounds great and just keep working at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Means, that kind of thing. The really nasty looking Larry, Larry, Lick of Larryness, which was this one, I think. So, uh, so like many things, you know, I've asked people, I asked Tim last night, like, yeah. do you sit on the guitar and work licks out? And so often, if yeah, I, I've you've asked me that before, and I still haven't got like, it up. No, <laughs> so, they're yeah. not, they're not going to fall yeah, yeah, from yeah. the heavens, you know, without work. You know, anything that you hear, where someone do, with you hear Eddie Van Halen, you know, even in the yeah. early days when he was knocking stuff out. That guy sat down and thought about it. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He didn't wake up one morning and go, I'm going to be a master shredder, but boom, I'm going to change the world of the guitar. Yeah. You know, he, in increments. That's it. Yeah. He came, he came back, um, you know, or came onto the guitar scene in a way where, at a time when it was dying. Yeah. And as he said himself, he gave it a shot in the arm. You know, he came in with something new and something different. And, and there are sort of things he used which, which not many people seem to have bothered with before, like playing off the delay with his volume control yeah. in, in Cathedral, which I think was off Van Halen too. Yeah. Uh, which is super cool. You know, you've got Eruption, which, you know, the first time any of us heard Eruption, it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Just listen to it now. I mean, it's, blimey, it's like 40 years old and it, it sounds amazing. Mm. It's still a stellar bit of guitar playing and the tone is just something else. Yeah, you know, but you don't get there with no work. Yeah, you know, you know, you don't get there without kind of putting the hours in. Yes, yeah, and that's that's you know where I come in in a way sort of help you find the shortcuts. But yeah, because got... there comes a point where you haven't got the hours anymore, <laughs> isn't there? It comes a point in your life. But at the same time, I've sat down and I've worked out stuff, and sometimes it's that around kind of concepts like what if I bend this note, this note, this note. Mm. I learned to bend them accurately. Or, you know, you hear something, you go, well, there's something in there. Yeah. It doesn't sound great yet, but there's something in there. I can use that. I can I can refine it. And it was a really good thing. lesson that you did for me a while back. I don't know if we put it out there or if it was one of those ones that we... Black hole edition. Yeah, it might have been a black <laughs> hole edition, but maybe it's one we should look at again where we actually uh, design riffs or look at things I naturally play and then take them out and form them. That yeah, was quite I good. I remember that. Yeah, it, it is. About, I wouldn't mind revisiting that. It is about not throwing. Not now. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I think we're about mm. over, aren't we? To be honest. I mean, using using a using a guitar analogy to explain a guitar analogy. Yeah. You think all those years ago, Les Paul came up with the idea of the solid body guitar, and he went to Gibson, and Gibson were making arch tops. Yeah. In the forties. And they're like, come on, Lester. You know. Yeah. The boat ain't leaving the harbour. This is silly. 
And then, 1948, Leo Fender came out with a telecaster, first name of the broadcaster. And Gibson went, Ooh. We need to up our game. Oh, yeah. dear. We've missed a trick. We've just told a very clever inventor that he's really, really silly. Yeah. And sent him on his way. And they got him back, obviously, to his system in designing the solid body, which became the Les Paul. Now, can you imagine if, if Les Paul had gone, well, I thought it was a good idea. When I saw what Leo had done, I knew it was a good idea. But, uh, no, I ain't pursuing that. I'll chuck it all away. Start again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not bothered with that. Go back to the drawing board. We'd have no Les Paul. Fail. Ridiculous. Yeah. But it's the same with your guitar stuff. If you don't take the acorn of an idea and mm. recognise it that it's a good idea, but it may it may be poorly played, mm. it may not be perfectly played, it may not be played with the tone you want. Yeah. But yeah. if you can recognise that it's a good idea and you can use that idea and you can refine that idea until it until it gets good. Yeah. Then it may be an idea that you can use. Yeah, I rem- I remember years and years ago when I went for a lesson with Phil Hillborn. Typical Phil was like, "Yeah, playing that quite fast." <laughs> he said, "Have you ever thought of doing three note string pentatonic scales?" And I was like, "Hmm, don't know. I hadn't really, to be honest." And he showed me a kind of a, a wild, well, well, sort you of go both three, ways, three note, you? yeah, three notes yeah. of. And I thought, well, that's a pretty wild concept. And there are some people who do it very, very well. But these days, it's something I use quite a lot. Mm. And it was the nugget of an idea. And I realised when I tried it the first few times, that it was not going to be easy. This was not going to be something that you nailed in every key. Quite a stretch. (laughs) Quite a stretch. But if you start with some of the little lines up here, like I did, in the key of B for this tune... Fingers, then you tap 20 seconds. Oh, you're starting higher than me. Uh, I am. <laughs> I got you. Uh. That's it. Make sure it's precise and it's mm. it's nicely um, what's the word articulated. Nice then you move formed. then yeah. you move down. So that one again, all fingers. Apart from the tap note on the right uh, So you skip the E. Oh no, you play the E, sorry. kind of sort of almost Guthrie-esque thing going on. That's where you start, yeah? The nugget of an idea is what yeah. can I do with that? Yeah. There was there was a big juncture 
I'm going to say this now before we wrap up. There's a big yeah. juncture in my plan, a big junction, a big kind of crossroads. Yeah. When I was about 20, I went to a rock course run by Herbie Flowers, and I met Big Jim Sullivan. And I really was at a point where I it was like, what do we do next? Mm. I can sweep pick, I can alternate pick, I can economy pick. I mean, Legato's not too bad. Technically, I guess we're we're sort of getting there. Mm. I know my scales inside out, my fretboard inside out. I don't know everything, but I'm, you know, I know quite a bit. Mm. Now what? I really well, now what? You know, yeah, yeah. I really you know show me the way, show me something new. And Big Jim invited me back to um, his home for lessons after the course had ended, and I went there and I sat in his living room, and I said. Do you know what, Jim? I don't know what to do. I'm 20 years old, and I don't know what to do. Yeah. There's all this stuff I can play, but I want to be challenged. I want, you know, where do I go next? What do I do? And he got this massive book. <laughs> it was about that thick. And he kind of gently put it down on the table in front of me. He goes, Dan, that's all scales and arpeggios. Read that. Yeah, yeah. Here's one of them. And then proceeded to try and show me something from the book. And it kind of blew my mind because I thought, I've never thought of it like this. I've never thought of kind of scales and arpeggios mm. as going beyond the normal minor major and diminished. But here we have sort of, you know, here we have arpeggios which are, are now picking up the, the sort of sevenths and things like yeah, that yeah. and the, the yeah. interesting tones. And it kind of opened my mind because I realised how much I had to learn and how far from being at the end of the rope, yeah. and and where was the soap at the end of the rope? It was more of a case of, ah, right, okay, so we can go in that direction. Yes, yeah, ideas oh, cool. and theories, and yeah, it's good. You know, and this this is the this is the thing is it's it's not always necessarily about how far someone plays, or how many you know. You know, it's like kid stuff, and the kids go, "Oh mm. yes, I've got a friend, and he knows all the solos from Metallica's." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the master of puppets. <laughs> you go, that's lovely. Yeah, that's, that's good. Not, that's not particularly creative necessarily. Yeah. He's good at reading tab books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, it shows someone's put the time in, but possibly their time might have been better spent elsewhere. Mm. And this is the thing: if you can get creative. You know, as I was watching a Troy Grady video recently, and he was saying the guitar is an amazing puzzle. And I thought, what a fantastic way of looking at it. Yeah, it is, isn't what it? What an yeah. amazing yeah. way of looking at it. I've never thought of it like that, but it is. He said it's this fantastic puzzle of, like, however many frets you've got and six strings, seven strings, eight strings, whatever your preference is. And, he said, and you're this, part of that puzzle as well, yeah, I say. Yeah, you are. And so is your, your head and your hands mm. and the lot. And he, and he, he said, you know, it's like about unlocking this kind of amazing puzzle and kind of yeah. like getting the most out of it, you know, from how you pick stuff or do you not pick stuff or, you know. Yeah. And then there's your own kind of sort of feel and touch in with all of these other things. Yeah. Cool. And if you can look at it like that and just try and think of maybe what do I want to play? This is what I was saying to Tim is think of what you want to play, not what the other guy plays. Mm. Well, it might be part of what the other guy plays. Mm. And I gave him the example of Greg Howe. Greg Howe's tapping technique came from him listening to Alan Holdsworth and not understanding okay, wrong, four, yeah. four note yeah. string scales. He thought the guy was tapping. He worked it all out in a different way, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And he, in, in a way, that's now formed part of his style. Mm. But that's no bad thing. You know, if you can kind of take an equation, even if you hear something on a record and you can't quite get it right, but maybe you can get Tom, something from it. Tommy right? Emmanuel did a similar thing, I think, with Chad Atkins. Didn't realise, obviously he didn't realise, maybe he didn't realise he had a, think, a thumb pick or something like that. Oh, right, so he yeah. worked it all out using a pick. Which will give you kind of cross-picking yeah. technique. <laughs> yeah. Like. yeah, But yeah, I mean, it's, if you can kind of think of what you want to play, what do you want to say on the guitar, mm. and now can you work towards working it out? Yeah, lovely. Thanks very much. No worries. I hope that helps one and all one their quest. See you next time. Slaters. Cheers.